Welcome to Real Life with Jenny. My name's Jenny Senapadaratna. Grab your favorite drink and a snack and we will get started. Today I have English breakfast tea with some cream and sugar, of course, and I have a plum. Plus, I have my puppy who is looking quite disgruntled today. <laughs> so let's get real. I have a question for you. How would you finish this sentence? My dream is to. Now, if you can finish that sentence, this podcast is for you. If you cannot finish that sentence, this podcast is for you. <laughs> no, this week has been one of those weeks that I'm like, Lord, I need your strength. In fact, I've started my prayer journal and almost every day it has been and I haven't had a whole lot of other things to write in it. Um, <laughs> my daughter has been very sick this week and she had a huge competition over the weekend. So lots of stress, you know, like, will she feel better? Will she not feel better? She did great. We're super proud of her. Um, but it is a really stressful situation. And we've all had those weeks, right? We've all had the weeks that um, we'd rather not do it again. And so that on Saturday, Sunday night, I don't, it doesn't really matter what night we sat down to watch what for me is one of the most relaxing things to do. And that is a Hallmark movie. Now you may not be a Hallmark fan. It's okay. We can still be friends. Uh, <laughs> I am a Hallmark fan because it is predictable. I know when I sit down, I know what's going to happen. Like, I know the plot. I know how it's going to end. I know there's going to be a minor crisis in the middle. I do not need to stress that it's going to be a sad ending because I do not enjoy anything that has a sad ending. Yes, I can live in denial. It's okay. <laughs> but Hallmark movies are super predictable. So I absolutely enjoy them. So we sat down, we watched about a half an hour whenever we have a chance, just Sam and I, just to hang out and de-stress. And there was a movie about a writer. Now, my daughter is very passionate about writing. In fact, she's, I'm, a, I'm probably a little biased, but she's very talented at writing. She has been able to write for different devotionals and she's won some competitions, um, not only with our denomination, but in other situations, she's just writing is something she's very good at. So w watching about a writer is always fun, even if it's fictional. So we're watching this show and it is a, a millionaire author, which, you know, really, I don't know if they even exist. Maybe they do. I am not a millionaire author. I am a woo. I published author. <laughs> So this millionaire author is talking to someone that's interviewing him and finds out she has a she started a book years ago and she got to chapter four of her novel. And he's like, why did you stop? And she was like, well, I had to start making money like you don't make money writing a book. I needed to make money. I got really busy, you know, on and on and on. He's like, you need to pull it out of the drawer. And I was struck really hard by that. And I realized that I'm not the average person. Most people are like, ooh, this is a cheesy romance. And here's Jenny like, ooh, pull it out of the drawer. So I thought I'd bring it to you and say, what have you put in the drawer, right? I know there are dreams and goals and things that I wanted to do with my life that I tried and it didn't work. And I should have burned them and not put them in a drawer. Like at one point, I thought it'd be really fun to maybe be a runner. Um, that is not my gift. It is not something I've enjoyed. I did a 5K and I was like, nope, I'm good. I discovered that I really enjoy walking because I am one of those people that's like, ooh, butterfly. You know, I just I enjoy going leisurely around and just enjoying what's around me. So running is not something I, I put that to the side. We didn't even put that in a drawer. We put that in the fireplace. We lit it on fire and said, that's no longer a goal. But there are things in life that you've been given, like you've been given a dream or you had a dream as a young child 
you had a dream in your 20s, you had a dream in your 30s, and you've put it in the drawer. You only got to chapter four and you haven't gone any further. And I am here today to say, go back to that drawer. Let us re-examine what is in your drawer of goals and dreams. And I have three things that I'm going to encourage you on. These are not three profound things. These are not, these are Jennyisms. So here we are. Number one, I want you to take it out of the drawer and bring it to the Lord and to say, you know what, God, here's the dream I have. What should I do with it? And see what he says. Like, bring it before him and say, Lord, I have this dream and it's bigger than me. And I don't really know if it makes any sense. Is it something I can do? And and figure out what he says about that dream or that goal. Like, let's bring it to him. Why be afraid, right? Like, that's what I live in is I live in fear. Like, will God be like, Jenny, you're crazy? Um, or will he be like, yeah, that's the dream I gave you. You need to run after it. And then I'm even more scared, right? <laughs> Number two, I want you to take that dream or goal out of that drawer and realize why you put it in there in the first place. Figure out why you put it in that drawer for the first place. Are you too busy? Is it really about finances? Is it because you're scared? What things are holding you back from something that you really actually want to do? Why haven't you gone for it? Why haven't you finished up your book? I know there have been, when I published my book, there were several of you that wrote me and said, I have a book inside of me. How should I do it? And I'm like, sit down and write. Like, that's the only way you're going to get the book. In fact, last night we finished up the movie because we only do a half an hour at a time. So it takes us a while to get through a movie. And my daughter said, you know what? These people need to remember that a first draft is just that. It's a first draft. All you have to do is write it. The hard work's after that first draft. And I was like, that's very true. Um, because she's written a full first draft of a book and now she's in the editing process and it's a hard process. But really, it's about getting behind that computer or behind the typewriter or whatever you're going to do and sitting down and doing it. And that is so important when you're looking at your goals and dreams is you need to realize what is holding you back. And is it a valid reason or is it just an excuse? If it's really something you want to do, you need to make the time. You need to make the financial sacrifice. You need to move forward. And number three, what's your next step? It doesn't need to be, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to finish this whole book in an afternoon. It is, I'm going to pull it up and I'm going to reread those first four chapters and then I'm going to add to it right? It's a simple step. What's your, your third thing is, is what's your first step? It could just be dusting it off and going, here we go. I'm going to try this, but you're not going to change your life overnight. That's not how goals and dreams happen. You don't start, you don't get to go and be like, hey, I'm going to be the next Joyce Myers, which by the way, I'm not going to be, but I'm going to be the next Joyce Myers and I'm just going to book a stadium and people are going to show up. That's not how life works. I mean, that's how God can work, I suppose. That's not normally how he works. There's small steps. There is speaking. Like I get to, um, on a semi-regular basis, speak to senior groups. You know, I'm not filling stadiums. In fact, I'm not talking to millions of people. It doesn't matter. I'm taking one step at a time and seeing where God will bring me with my dreams and goals. And so this week, if you can say, I've always wanted to, and you can fill in that blank, I want you to do those three things. I want you to take it before the Lord and say, Lord, I've put this to the side. I've always wanted to do whatever it is. And I've set it to the side. Lord, Will you help me in this area? And then take it to then take it and go, why have I not done it? Why am I scared? Why am I allowing my fears or limitations get before something that I really want to do? Maybe it's not something you really want to do. That's okay. It's okay to say, you know what? I've always wanted to be an acrobat and now I'm 
46 and I realize acrobatics is not my thing. So I'm going to allow that to be for the next generation. Um, <laughs> or you say, maybe I could start mentoring people in that area. Like you just don't know what your fears and what your um, excuses have kept you from. So let's examine those. And then number three, take your next step. Let's start moving towards our goals. Um, the, what the lady said on there was she goes boldly after her dreams and lives the life that she's always wanted. And I honestly feel like we sometimes make excuses for our lives being what we don't want it to be because we're not willing to step out and say, you know what, I'm going to try something new. Because the biggest part of failure is not trying. And I realize that failure is one of my biggest fears. Really, it is. It's one of my fears that I'm going to do something and look silly. In fact, every single week when I record this podcast, I go out to my family and they're like, how did it go? And I'm like, "Mm, well, we'll see. You know, it wasn't that great. I'm always afraid that it's going to be an ultimate failure. But you know what? I try and I do it anyway. Does it always hit it out of the park? No, it doesn't. But I always try because I do not want to ever say I didn't go after my dream. I didn't. I just sat back and let other things happen because I did that for 46 years. And today's the day it stops. And I hope that this week is the week it stops for you. I want you to go into that drawer, pull out your dreams and goals and say, I've always wanted to. Lord, help me. May that be your prayer this week. Well, that's all I have for you this week. You can find me at Real Life with Jenny on Instagram and on Facebook, also at ChristConnection.cc slash Jen. All of my info is there. I would love to connect with you. If you have a dream or a goal that you want someone to pray with you with, and you're maybe a little embarrassed because it's an odd dream or it's really a big dream, woohoo, I'd be excited for that contact me. I'd love to pray with you. I'd love to stand beside you and say, hey, you can do this. It's okay. Do not be afraid of a dream that's too big. Do not be afraid of a dream that seems unattainable. That is a dream that God gave you. And do not step to the side and say, let someone else do it. Don't let God use someone else. Let him use you. Let's go after our dreams. Let's go after our passions. And let's stop living a life that we just get through today and start going after what God has called us to do. You all have a great week.